guys, Ron here, and it's time to make the final 5 legendaries of the Asone region. Many months ago I made the box art legendaries of Asone. These three are the most important Pokemon in the plot of my region, so please make sure to check out their creation and lore if you haven't already, because their story does affect the lore of the 5 legendaries I'm making today, as well as the general lore presented throughout the various creating new Pokemon videos, like the videos about the starter Pokemon. By now I've also created videos on the early root Pokemon, fossils, and various important families of fairy, grass, ghost, bug types, etc. But today we're going to make powerful Pokemon based on various Middle Eastern myths, structures, and characters. I'm going to begin by making a trio based on Gog and Magog. Now these two names appear in the Bible as a sign of the apocalypse. When Gog and Magog are defeated at the end of days, uh, there will be peace. Now in its original context, it literally means Gog from the land of Magog. But over thousands of years and many interpretations, Gog and Magog slowly became two invaders from distant lands. By the Roman period, legends have been attached to the Gog and Magog prophecy like the gates of Alexander, made by the forces of Alexander the Great, to specifically defend against the invasion from Gog and Magog. And in Islam, a great ruler called Du al Karnain, named after his two horns, created a wall to defend against the primitive uh, tribes of Gog and Magog. The legend of Du al Karnain also became part of uh, Alexander the Great's myths and legends. So, what if we took this story literally and made it part of Asone's past? Asone's lore heavily revolves around the past wars between humans and Pokemon, so what if during the war, these two powerful Pokemon based on Gog and Magog attacked a human city and the humans were defended by another legendary based on Dual Kamnain? So let's first make our Gog and Magog duo. Now throughout medieval times, Gog and Magog were interpreted to be various civilizations like the Vikings, Huns, and Mongols, etc. Now since our region is mostly based on countries from West Asia, how about we get some uh, European and African uh, representation? I want to make Gog based on various ancient North African civilizations, particularly Nubians and Carthaginians, while Magog will be based on the Vikings. But I don't want to make them just like tall troll monsters or ogres. So how about we take some animal inspiration? That, that way they'll be more likable. And who doesn't like monkeys? And this will also allow them to be more humanoid. So since there's only one monkey native to Europe, the Barbary macaque, we'll combine it with the Vikings and make a Magog Pokemon. I say macaque instead of macaque. And I've been dying to make a baboon Pokemon, so they will be our Gog inspiration. Let's start with my Magog Viking macaque. I'm gonna start out by giving him a mane and a helmet. He'll be a steel type, so it's natural armor. The helmet will be based on more accurate Viking helmets, so no horns. Spiky and puffy hair, cause this thing is also an ice type and cold. I gave him pointy macaque ears, but I like how they look like the horns of a stereotypical Viking helmet, so I, I kept it like this. I'm gonna give him metallic forearms with Viking runes that uh, symbolize ice giant and strength. I gave him Viking patterns on his biceps, an axe tail, and more patterns on the helmet, but then decided to give him solid ice biceps that also look like chainmail. The fingers are reminiscent of mittens, and the cold colors and piercing eyes that could believably become white when berserk. And before showing its final artwork, let's sketch out the baboon brother. His helmet will be based on a combo of different ancient northern African warrior helmets. Instead of the downward sloping hair of his brother, this Pokemon will have its hair pointed up and sideways like a baboon. His mane and cape fur uh, face down, instead of the spiky hair of the other one. He'll have a Nubian warrior outfit made of rock, various Carthaginian shield inspired patterns, and a uh, spear tail. Red and dark colors to contrast with the other's light and blue colors, and here is Makog, the invading Pokemon. Makog is a combo of Macaque and Magog, but also has a cog, uh, a piece of uh, machine in his name, as a reference to his metal parts. The other invading Pokemon, Babog, is Baboon and Gog. It used to be Bog as well, back when I thought of making it a ground type. Babog is more expressive and can expand and contract the mineral armor on its body. It can break off its tail and use it as a spear, instantly growing another tail. Makog is very stoic and his tail is exceptionally long. In battle, it holds it like an axe. They're both rather intelligent and knowledgeable in combat. They tend to stay away from humans. These two sibling Pokemon would roam a zone in ancient times, training and challenging strong Pokemon. If they succeeded in battle, they would plunder the resources of their foe and give it to Pokemon that inhabited their domain. Makog would bring precious metals to its icy home, and Babog would bring back food to its arid environment. Thousands of years ago, when Pokemon and humans were at odds, these Pokemon went hysterical and began to attack humans, alongside many other Pokemon. However, another legendary Pokemon, who seemed to be unfazed by the hysteria, was able to defend humans from Babog and Makog's rampage. After this event, these two went into hiding. They both have the ability Battle Armor and the hidden ability Defiant. 
Honestly, I was so worried before making these two. I thought I couldn't make them look related and that they would end up looking like generic trolls or something, but I'm glad I was able to find real world animals to take inspiration from and almost gave them complementary designs, one being darker and redder while the other one looks lighter and bluer. I think my personal favorite is Makog. Now I'm going to make this Du Al Karnaim Pokemon that will defend against the invading twins. It will take inspiration from Alexander the Great, because some believe that his helmet had two horns and lion skin over it, although that's probably from the movie. So maybe we make an armored horned lion and combine it with the Lion of Judah to make this Pokemon look like an emblem or symbol and even give it some messianic imagery, kind of like Aslan from the Chronicles of Narnia. So I'm making a lion with strong upper body and, and giant moose-like horns that connect to its helmet-like face. The semicircle horns kind of looked a little boring, so I made it look like the bricks of a wall, but they also do end up looking like the candles of a menorah. It works. I made this entire mane out of uh, armor and uh, defined the body shape, some regal patterns, and more armor throughout the body. I gave it a tail that floats, and uh, it's a little easter egg implying that it's a disciple of Azar Era, my box art legendary who is on the side of humans. Finishing up the face by adding a mustache inspired by medieval heraldry, fix the horns, and it's obviously going to be golden. That's kind of a no-brainer, but the, that means that his body is going to be purple to complement it. Presenting Alexeno, the reinforcement Pokemon, a fighting fairy type. Its name comes from Alexander, which comes from the Greek Alexandros, which uh, comes from the words to ward off, defend, and protect men, and Xeno, a prefix for foreigner, since this Pokemon is basically a foreign Pokemon that came to the aid of the humans of Asone. This Pokemon has the ability to reinforce any object with its roar, controlling the density of armor and even bodies. While it was unable to solely end the ancient wars, it would roam around a home using its fairy magic to strengthen the shields and armor of brave warriors. It can create barriers and force fields that repel moves and abilities. During the hysteria, when Babog and Makog attacked Asone's central city, this Pokemon reinforced the city's walls and fought back the hysterical giants. These walls stayed unbreakable till modern times. Alexano's armor is actually hard and fur. Its horns are indestructible. No substance can scratch them. It has the ability Stamina and the hidden ability Mold Breaker, implying that the Alexano that withstood Hysteria has its hidden ability. It has a new signature move called Reinforcing Roar, which boosts the defense and special defense of the user and its ally in battle. I hope that you can find the mixing of various origins cool. Originally I was thinking about making this thing a vague horned animal, but the lion being associated with both Dur al Karnain, the concept of the Messiah, and Jerusalem made it irresistible as a basis. I've always been fond of the human faced lions of medieval hair so the mustache instead of whiskers is something I needed to do. Also emphasizes how old Alexano is. I borrowed parts of the Pokemon Pantherald I made two years ago, since it's not part of a zone. Alexano completes the Invasion Trio two Pokemon that tried to invade an Asonian city, and the Pokemon that prevented them from doing so, all based on the Gog and Magog prophecy from Abrahamic religions. The entire lore can't be fully understand unless you see the map of Ason, which isn't ready yet, so make sure to check out the various Ason region videos when those come out, so you can put all these pieces together. Next I want to make a duo that represents the land and the sea. They didn't create them like Kyogre and Groudon, but they're, they're the two colossal masters of the earth and water. I want to make a Pokemon that's tied to the pyramids that are in my region. And you know how people still can't believe that the pyramids of Giza were made by an ancient civilization and try to attribute it to crazy theories like aliens instead of human ingenuity? So how about we make a pyramid Pokemon? Originally I was going to make a literal walking pyramid that Asonians worshipped, but how about we make a Pokemon whose skeleton was used as the structure and foundation of these pyramids? It'll be an animal with like a triangular back. Some kind of desert animal would make sense. Something that can believably have spines that point upwards. So how about we make it based on the thorny devil? Let's do it! I spent so much time on the face, it just never looked right, and then just kept on adding details and spikes until it looked right, but it never did. I kept on yelling at the design, saying, you don't look good, because I hated it for some reason. I couldn't find any logic behind its patterns, until I finally decided to make him asymmetrical. He will look way more natural, instead of having orderly spikes. Now it looks like a desert Pokemon. Gonna have a full-size cactus on its back to show that this thing is huge and has plants growing on it. Of course, it'll be uh, desert colored, but finding the exact shades of yellow and orange uh, took some time. Behold, Nomedifice, the structure Pokemon. From the words Nomad and Edifice, a large imposing building. These colossal Pokemon roamed ancient Asone in herds. Many Pokemon would take refuge in their crevices and cliffs, eating the plants that grew on them, receiving shade and even drinking the water that pooled on its back. Ancient Asonians revered this Pokemon's generosity and felt it appropriate to make this Pokemon useful even after its life has ended. It is speculated that the skeleton 
skeletons of these Pokemon were used as the structure of pyramids found in a zone. The numbers of Nomadophis slowly diminished over thousands of years. It is thought that their size could not be sustained, especially with their oddly shaped bones. Ancient Nomadophis were seven times larger than their living descendants. They used to be 450 feet tall. They have this new ability called Giant Scale. It's basically their version of Multiscale, so since their scales are huge, the damage they take when their HP is full is halved. This Pokemon was the toughest to design in this video. I almost panicked, but everything clicked when I realized it should look jagged. It's supposed to look like an ancient and complicated being. That's why it's uh, more detailed than the average Pokemon. I hope I successfully made it look uh, a little ancient and wise. It's basically a repurposing of Bygolem's design from the fifth episode of creating new Pokemon. It's crazy how diff- Shut up! Let's go grab a glass of water and start working again. It's crazy how different my skill was at designing Pokemon back then. Now I want to make a Pokemon who is responsible for the Great Flood found in the Bible, and various other civilizations in the Middle East like Sumer. During the war, this Pokemon went crazy and summoned a deluge. Now, what famous river floods? The Nile. And what animal can be found in the Nile? Well, hippos used to be there, but not anymore. So how about the Nile Crocodile? I want to make a godlike croc that can swallow anything and can also unleash an infinite amount of water. Sobek, after all, is an Egyptian fertility god who was also associated with war and also represented the dangers of the Nile, so he'll be a good god to keep in mind. It's a floating crocodile with psychedelic patterns. It's psychic in water, after all. It'll be happy, but it's uh, hiding some pain. Its mouth will be an infinite wormhole, kind of like Guzzlord, finding the right proportions and making its patterns look like a galaxy, finishing off the patterns, and then finding the colors ended up being a, a, a chore, because I literally had every option. It could be any color. I settled with magenta and periwinkle, just to represent its type and, and yellow to show that uh, its mouth and patterns glow. Say hello to Crocosmic, the infinite Pokemon. This Pokemon floated through the clouds in ancient times, consuming all in its path. Its stomach is infinite and breaks apart atoms and molecules in order to create new elements and chemicals. The easiest molecule this Pokemon can create and decompose is water. Water is this Pokemon's most common byproduct. In the past, this Pokemon would bring water to land suffering from drought. It would telekinetically cause the rivers of Asone to overflow with nutrients that nourished crops. It was worshipped in ancient Asone and would be offered rare minerals on the highest of altars for Crocosmic to swoop down and consume. Thousands of years ago, this Pokemon went on a hysterical rampage and flooded the region of Asone. Once it came back to its senses, it telekinetically lowered the tides, forming Asone's modern landscape, and then secluded itself in shame. Various Asonian landmarks were made as a result of this Pokemon's flood, like a submerged ancient city and a salt-filled sea where all the salt from the flood accumulated once the water receded. It has a new ability called Assimilation, which boosts its special attack stat when hit with a special move, since it just consumes and reassembles these elements. Its hidden ability is the power of alchemy. This Pokemon is both responsible for creating the Pokemon version of the Great Flood, told in multiple civilizations, and the Asone region's version of the Dead Sea. In fact, the Pokemon that created a Great Flood and a Pokemon that created a Great Earthquake were originally the box art legendaries of the Asone region when I first developed this as a teenager, but they became Crocosmic and Nometaphys. I hope you check out the previous legendary video I made to fully understand what the Hysteria is, and follow along with the future videos that are in the series. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to check out the previous art video and consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and huge discounts on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I'll post the full artwork of these Pokemon and uh, bye!